Hey people, yes, it is the total market cap, your coin market cap analysis. You don't always see that. Thought I'd throw it in. Um, our ongoing bear bias um, was gratified after this extreme low volatility squeeze. So this is what happens. The market bores you into dis-existence. In other words, a large amount of people just exit the market because it just seems like nothing's happening, nothing's moving. They come for excitement, they come for games. In fact, when it gets the most quiet, it's usually just before real fireworks are about to occur. You had a bit of a squeeze and a grind line there and you spilt. Everyone's wondering, where's my Bitfinex pump? Oh dear, oh dear. Well, I'm afraid it's been taken back. It's largely been taken back entirely, in fact, over here. Um, that was your Bitfinex pump, the tether fear and all of that. Um, it was not a huge, huge buyer that that was all going to end up, but there was risk associated with that. Little, little inverted grind there that showed that that's the way it's going to be going after it was holding on to these higher levels. And then we spilled down, 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 nice flat bottom, really super tight flat bottom, little bump and bump. And then we've had a nice little roll over here. By the way, this is small still. It's not the big one. You can see we've had much bigger crashes there that didn't continue. Much bigger crashes here that haven't uh, continued all the way. So this is just an initial move. Has kind of run this grind line here on the market cap that captures the lows. <clears throat> this is total market cap. It's got Bitcoin in it. Let's have a look at the old market cap. Similar structure. You might not even recognize much of a difference apart from my analysis there on a little bit of support here at this juncture when we were down this way. So suggestion that uh, yeah, there's a, this will be a, certainly a, a level of support. I think when you look at the key areas, the key areas on um, BTC, the 6.2 is being supported. So let's just show you this one. This is the Bitfinex. So this has the exchange fear. It's all going down. Their volume is down. They've gone from, you know, being second, third and fourth uh, by volume to Binance normally at number one to being 10th, 11th and 12th. So it's been they've been hurt by this. <clears throat> but nonetheless, let's have a look. If we take it up to the 10 day, what are those pink lines? The pink lines are actually less meaningful. Um, then you might imagine most people overvalue angled lines, but I am just going to put them on there anyway, and everyone's going to overfocus on them, and that is what human nature is. But that's your trim across the tops, apart from your blow off high and sell off, and then that's kind of your trim along the bottom. Um, uh, the Bitfinex pump took you through the pink lines. Let's drop it down now. You probably can't see much uh, through the, the pink lines, but not for long. Couldn't hold back down and now you're getting a bit of a supportive bid along the base of this uh, grind. We're squeezing into the corner here uh, and that means something goes down. Um, but you can trade through them. You could go really low vol and just go straight through them. You could end up above this line but below this line, um, which means nothing big uh, has happened. You could be down here somewhere where in fact you are above the descending line but below the ascending one. The idea is that before this apex point is met um, you've taken a key decision and with this here just getting a bit of a bid if you see some sort of bear flagging here that could be the prelude to a major sell-off. That could be a prelude to a major sell-off. So the bear flag along the base here, boom, and down she goes. So uh, you might want to have to watch that one uh, closely. That could be a trade for you. Yes, uh, by the way, not a recommendation, not an advisory service, not regulated. Do your own thinking. But anything that resembles continuation pattern on that baseline pink line would be of interest to me. That's all I'm telling you. Um, in the same way, if you've got a pump and you've got a bull flag pullback on the pink line. So it's not only a, a bear story, but overall, you know, when I look at the charts I've been showing in our premium area, excuse this, I'm on a big screen, so it's a bit narrow here. Um, but where's the one I'm looking for? Where's the one I'm looking for? Crypto General. Let's do that. Uh, I'll pull it up so long. Um, the one thing that always looks at looks out at me when I look at this is, is it a long? If we're looking at that little triangle of activity that is supporting on that, you've got to ask yourself, is that long? If you had a hundred grand here and you hodled your way, by the way, you've lost 70%. You had 31,000. On Ethereum, by the way, you've lost 86%. You're holding 14,000. 
Um, this is the key point about being able to, you know, take money off the table. You could have got out. Yes, you get caught by the first dump. You sell on the, the, the late bull rally somewhere up here at the 78.6. Even if you got out at 61.8, you'd have 62,000 odd and you could have shorted. We had six digits shorting periods in this there and even in this down there. And my, my opinion, there, once again, when I look at that, sitting nestling on that level is that is not a good place. Could it pump? It could. Do I think so? Uh, my balance of probability remains bare and that is to the downside. I took this chart literally this morning of preparing a slide webinar 31st, uh, by the way, not tonight, not tomorrow night, the 31st. Um, but uh, I will have a very interesting proposition there for you. Plus, we'll remind everyone of the crypto that we see could lose two thirds of its market cap if we have a spill here to sub four into the threes for Bitcoin, which I still think is a distinct possibility. You can find out more about that uh, when we do. But let's go back to that market cap. In fact, we were on Bitcoin here. Um, so the pink lines, watch out for these pink lines. It could mean something. But more important for me is the 6-2 level. The 6-2 level has been consistently supported. When we've traded through it, we've rallied, we've traded through it, we've rallied. And then your hard floor is the 6,000 level. I don't know how that got to be 6,029. Let's pull him down, 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 down now. There she blows, uh, 6,062, uh, and that should be 7,000. Every time you change time zones, it seems to shift the lines a little bit. You've got to realign them. So that was our top floor, uh, and this is the 6.8 level. It should be the 6.8, and is roughly there. So we couldn't hold the 6.8 on the pump, and now we're back end down here. By the way, remember, there's still premium on BTC in these coins there's still premium in btc on these coins um, i'll come back to that one um, if you're looking at it on binance again you've got a different set uh, of pink lines uh, you've already crept through and you're on the downside slope slipping down this is this is why i say you can't take the the the, the pink lines for gospel because they are angled lines and depending on the nature of the exchange you may have had different highs uh, slightly um, as a level you can see it different highs different highs we have crept through with the binance tether and now we're dipping down so it doesn't have to be the triggering event the triggering event are your horizontal levels whoops bring it right francis get it out there I just uh, that's it these blue lines the dark blue and the light blue the 68 and the 62 let's show you what happened on kraken which is less of the premium of the uh but for next tether fears and if you have a look at that that 62 we literally sat on it and went through it and then we had the bit for next pump we died at the 68 again died at the 68 died at the 68 died at the 68 can't hold above the soft ceiling you're not going to run your hard ceiling Dipped in the 6.2 levels, dipped in the 6.2, dipped in the 6.2, dipped in the 6.2, dipped in the 6.2, back down, touched the 6.2, slight bid. Look for a continuation pattern here for downside and you could be onto a winner. If it doesn't and it plunges back up, you can see there was plunge protection buying. Um, I say plunge protection, there is no plunge protection. There's people that just want to buy at the bottom of the range and sell at the top. Um, it's been that kind of a market. They'll have done well if they sold every time it was six eights and six sixes and bought every time it was six threes and six fours. That had done okay for quite a while now. See that stall box? There's the midline that runs through it. It's that 6-2 level. Where have you come to before you've got your bid? That 6-2 level. By the way, this is Kraken, but it's not very that dissimilar for Coinbase. Very close to your 6-2 uh, level there. Again, can't hold the 6-8. Runs for the 6-8. Can't hold the 6-8. There you go. Let's get rid of that. But it's a nasty little puke. Uh, that with a squeeze within the squeeze within the squeeze that target was run yes you didn't know we had that draw on yeah you're not in the sniper circle that's your problem um, so that target has been run and nice made nicely um, with that little downside squeeze that means that bit for next event has largely been taken back it's not a hundred percent it's bidding up to here so it's slightly above that stall box but look at that stall box again 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 I would draw it more like that now or let's paint it on very much like the other one sitting around the key level that was 6200 so you know some of the key levels we call these key levels of significance you'll learn about them on a program and why and how we use them that's it there's your box with your dashed blue line in the middle point therein 
Okay, um, what else have I got for you? Well, I'm dying to tell you which one is our two-thirds market cap loss. Um, reasonable liquidity, you can get in it, you can trade it, you could get a six-digit sum short um, with a bit of time. Um, and it could lose two-thirds if we get the downside break, if we get. All things are subject, it's a possibility, it's probabilities. This is an outcome of game of probabilities, not certainties. People always say, ah, oh, right and wrong, I'm going to be wrong all the time. Trust me, um, it's more about making money than being right or wrong. But uh, it, it is going to be interesting and we will be doing the formula for success, by the way, on the 31st October, November, the formula for success. That's right. There's a mass formula that will determine how you win uh, process and mathematics on this webinar it's not what you uh, make it's what you keep we'll cover that we will be doing an edited version of it and very very to the point and punchy we'll cover the mathematics formula uh, to success and also the benefit of learning how to short you're on a complete fully rounded trader till you can short many people have no method or no basis for shorting they just have to sit out the markets and watch them fall and not lose hey that's a start um, don't lose it's a good principle but there are ways to make money and they come very quickly when markets fall as you can see here this was nice little what's a blue Monday for most people as they're playing new order um, is actually not a bad day for us nice start to the week um, and that's because we have the correct bias and we're patient we stayed in stayed in stayed in stayed in many people got bored out anyway um, that's your flyby uh, update um, little ghost peak at Ethereum there was your little red grind line again squeezing squeezing Japanesey guess where your volume by price key point is on this uh, structure you guessed it the round number 200 uh, dollars 200 dollars and it f let go of that so it was clinging clinging cling volume is decent for the spill but not epic um, especially compared to the collapse there and the Bitfinex pump, uh, tether based pump. So, you know, this could be bought up. It could be bought up and we could be quite close to where we were or just marginally lower. It's no huge at this point. But what happens next for Bitcoin? The one thing that is interesting on this is that uh, Bitcoin uh, sold off probably harder than it has since this period over here, which is the 18th of October. So it's the most action we've seen from Bitcoin and it's mainly to the bear side um, since the 18th of October and you've got to remember we've been squeezing squeezing that and that was more gradual this was pretty brutal for this period of history for this period of history it doesn't match the events um, of the 11th of October but given how low vol and how we've been squeezing and everyone been getting bored and falling asleep the other thing that worries me about crypto a wall of good news a wall of good news this exchange supposedly institutional money coming to the market you know good news of that variety personally I don't see it as good news at all um, but what's meant for to be seen as good news but stamp has been bought um, by Belgium investment fund kind of like Polinex being bought by Circle that's run by Goldman Sachs and the guy saying oh we absolutely need regulation to come in no surprises there the bastards um, and all of this institutional money now elbowing its way in and all the rules they want which will be control structure which will be uh, taxation, disclosure, surveillance, all the usual things that control structures, mafias and other dis you know, organizations of disrepute that wish to steal your liberty are all about um, will be coming. Um, but it should be overall at a financial level good news um, for uh, crypto. Yes, there was a Canadian hack and a small little maple place isn't going to make people whole. It's not exactly what you'd call good news, but largest government. Everyone's talking about crypto now. It's suddenly making them out. Governments are deciding. People are raising money. Devs are doing this. XRP sales double. Who knows what that means? Sale of coins? Sale of what? I don't know, but it's all, all like positive mood music. And the problem you get, you get an unexplained sell-off out of a low volatility setup. You're at the bottom when bad news keeps coming out and the market moves up anyway that's your bottom you are not at your bottom at all when the market turns down on a wall of good news and that is my take
might not be popular with all of you, but I'm going to tell you like I see it. Um, and I still think this, there'll be a little bit of a buyback on this and then it'll go back into low volatility, but it might still bleed out and then we could eventually roll. Um, let's see. Let's see. That's my bias for now. But as I say, we're in a squeeze and it could pump to the upside and I could be 100% wrong and I will cover uh, and do whatever is necessary uh, to stay in the game. Come and join us October the 31st. Uh, that'll be at 1900 uh, BST. Is 1900 or 1930? I'll have to check that one. 1900, I think it is. Uh, British summertime for that web uh, webinar. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. This is a key thing. Plus how you could have made extra money shorting by learning and being the more complete trader during the bear market cycle. Yes, we've even done it on equities recently. It applies on all markets. You can be uh, flexing between multiple markets all you need is method mindset and market um, and we'll talk about that and then we will remind you of our coin that we feel if we spill south we'll lose 66 percent to the downside see you there um, and pretty in the pink for a blue monday for most you can decide how you will be facing weeks uh, like this in the future this is not for everyone so think hard before you attend. Uh, there will be an offer, something I haven't offered ever before, lower price point for people to learn the method because I keep getting requests. Um, so you'll find out about that quite a bit lower. So uh, see you there. Bye for now.